wanna be a billionaire so freaking bad Buy all of the things I never had I wanna be on the cover of Forbes magazine Smiling next to Oprah and the Queen Oh, every time I close my eyes I see my name in shining light Yeah, a different city every night Oh, I, I swear the world better prepare For when I'm a billionaire Yeah, I will have a show like Oprah I will be the host of Welcome to Sociology One this is lecture three. We're going to be talking about stratification. So I thought a good place to start would be pronouncing this big word. Stratification. Stratification. Now that we can pronounce it, now we have to define it. So what is stratification? Stratification is an institutionalized pattern of inequality in which those who hold some social statuses get access to scarce resources then do others this is by Brinkerhoff White Ortega and White's um, I think it's a good definition I wanted to give them credit for it so let's take apart this definition one word at a time and see if we can understand it better so inequality I'm hoping that you're beginning to understand the word inequality if you think about the opposite of inequality that would be equality when you play the game of Monopoly, all players start with the same amount of money. Every player begins with $1,500. Well, that's a game. It's a fun game. But in the real world, we have inequality. We all begin the game of life with different amounts of money. We aren't all handed a sum of money. We get different amounts of money. So if Monopoly was a real game and it had five players and each player represented one American okay if it, sort of what we're saying here is if America was basically five people how would the monopoly money be spread at the beginning of the game if it was a real game if you look at this bar graph you'll see that one American the top, the top, the, the richest Americans would start the game with $6,000 of Monopoly money. That could buy a lot of properties. The next highest player, maybe this is sort of like the upper middle class, would start the game with about, that looks like almost $1,000, maybe 900 The middle class would start the game with about $300. The working class would start with about $100, player D. And player E, the homeless, the, the, the sort of the, the class that's really struggling just to keep you know, a roof above their heads, things like that, they actually would start the game with negative amounts of money. And that actually does make a lot of sense because some people are born into families with lots of debt. Rather than starting, you know, being born into a family with lots of money, there are families that they have more debt than money. So some Americans are born into families, and they're in the hole, so to speak. So that's what inequality is all about, that difference between you know, who's starting with 6000 and who's starting with debt, if it was monopoly money. So let's go back to our definition. Stratification is an institutionalized pattern of inequality. We understand what, the, what inequality is now. So let's look at the other important words in this definition. Well, I saw the word pattern and status in there. So let's look at patterns and statuses. Here I have a little factoid for you. A, a woman earns 75 cents for every dollar a man earns. This is a real statistic. Some of you might be saying, I have a friend. She makes more money than her husband. I know women that make more money than men. Well, the thing about statistics is, it transcends the individual. While you might make more money than your husband, or you might know women who make more money than men, it's not about those people. It's about the trend that's larger than isolated stories. 
of people you know. This is the Bureau of Labor Statistics money, I'm um, sorry, data, the Bureau of Labor Statistics data. And what our government data shows us is that women earn 75 cents for every dollar a man earns, even when they're in the same job. I've talked to female faculty members at this college, and uh, we've discussed this little little pattern between men and women, and it kind of shakes out. Um, just the way things work, we're going to talk a little bit about this later, um, women earn less than men. Interestingly enough, women do not pay 25 le cents less for things. So let's say you've got a man and a woman, same job, she's getting paid 75 cents an hour, he's getting paid a dollar, you know, if you think along with me. She goes to buy a hamburger. Well, if the hamburger is $2, she has to work, what, four hours to get that? The man has to work two. So if you think about this, you know, women are getting more money in their paycheck, and then they have to pay the same prices as men for things like hamburgers and things like tuition for college and things like that. Some things, like a car, women actually pay more than men. When a woman walks into a car dealership to buy a car, what our research shows is that women pay more for the car than men. So if you put that all together, a woman's getting 75 cents for every dollar a man earns, and then she goes and buys something like a car, and she pays more for it. So that's just a little wild. Some other research I can show you. When we look at men and women with the same education working over the same time period, this difference, the 75 cents dollar difference over the lifetime is gigantic. Okay? The average female high school graduate who works full time from 25 to 65 will earn $450,000 less than the average man with a high school graduate. When we look at bachelor's degrees, and again, we're comparing people with the same level of education. Women with bachelor's degrees, men with bachelor's degrees, working the same 40 years of their life. The research tells us that the woman's going to make $900,000 less than the man over the life course. The last one, professional degrees, if we're talking about a female doctor, medical doctor, a female professor, a female lawyer, a female um, accountant. And she works for 40 years of her life. And the man works for 40 years of her life. And he's a doctor or a lawyer. Over the life course, the woman makes $2 million less than the man with a professional degree. So these things are no small potatoes. Some other statuses that sociologists look at in terms of stratification are race, social class, religion, education level, political party, physical characteristics, and others. Some other um, resources that sociologists examine would be things like um, jobs, income, um, uh, elected positions, uh, media portrayal, things like that. All these things can be stratified. Again, our definition, stratification, an institutionalized pattern of inequality in which those who hold some statuses get more access to scarce resources than others. What we're going to do right now is we're going to look at how the structural functional perspective looks at stratification. We're going to do a discussion uh, assignment. And then we're going to jump over to the conflict approach and look at how they view stratification very, very differently. So let's begin with the structural functional perspective. According to the structural functional perspective, stratification is necessary to induce people with special intelligence, knowledge, and skills to enter the most important occupations. Again, from our, the author of our textbook, stratification is necessary and it is inevitable from the structural functional perspective. The logic of the argument goes like this. Some jobs are more important than others. 
some jobs require skill and knowledge. Okay, if you're pushing a broom, anybody can push a broom. If you're doing a heart transplant, you know how you need to know how to do a heart transplant. That requires skill and knowledge. Okay? Relatively few people have the ability to acquire the skills and knowledge that are needed to do these types of jobs. Not everyone can become a heart surgeon or a brain surgeon or a rocket scientist. To induce people with skill and knowledge to do these jobs, society must promise them high incomes or other awards. Why would people become doctors if they didn't get paid well? Why would people become um, lawyers or, or politicians if it didn't pay well or reward them in some way? Some jobs are more important than others. We have to induce people to go into those jobs with um, money and rewards. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to do two discussion assignments about the structural functional uh, perspective. The first thing I want you to do in groups is to explain how sociologists using the structural functional approach develop this interpretation of stratification. You know the assumptions of the structural functional approach. It's stability, harmony, and evolution. You know the tools that structural functionalists use. They use manifest functions. They use latent functions. They look for functionality and they look for dysfunctionality. You know how they view institutions. Institutions are great things. They meet human need. They solve our problems for our society. So I want you to explain how all of that connects to their ideas about stratification. How is it that using those tools, how is it with those assumptions that they came to this particular view of stratification? I want you to connect the assumptions with the interpretation of stratification that I just went over, which is that stratification is necessary, stratification is inevitable, it induces people with special intelligence, knowledge, and skills to enter the most important occupations. And, you know, just connect that up for me. The other discussion assignment I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask whether you agree with the structural functional view of stratification and why. And I want you to explain to me how would a sociologist using the structural functional approach explain a professional football player who earns millions of dollars a year and then a kindergarten teacher who's earning thirty thousand dollars a year how do we explain that if you were a structural functionalist and you had to explain that to someone using the assumptions of structural functionalism how does that work how do we pay our professional athletes millions of dollars and the people who teach our children thirty thousand dollars a year so go to your discussion board now and discuss that with your classmates. Mother got a seen suicide twin. Oh my, oh my God. Me and my mother got a seen genocide twin. Oh my, oh my God. Me and my mother got a seen suicide twin. Oh my, oh my God. Oh my God.